What makes a medieval fantasy that has no magic in it, or even human beings, populated instead by societies of mice? What makes Mouse Guard such a terrific comic? This is for the love of comics, so of course I'm going to give you my take on what makes this such an excellent comic and why it's one of my favorite comics. But first, a bit of an overview. Mouse Guard is an American comic created by and mainly written and drawn by David Peterson. It is published by Arkea, an imprint of Boom Comics. These are the tales of the titular Mouse Guard, once warriors fighting for the mice societies, but since the end of a distant war, they serve as, in the words of the preface, they serve as escorts, pathfinders, weather watchers, scouts, and bodyguards for the mice who live among the territories. The territories here are the mouse territories, a network of dozens of towns, villages, and settlements the mice have carved out in the middle of a dangerous world in a time and place that resembles most of all medieval Europe. Although these mice talk and build and farm and hunt like humans, they are still tiny mice. Their world is one in which not only does everything prey on them, but also in which nature, the seasons, inclement weather and harsh environments are as perilous as predators. It takes a special cocktail of bravery, intelligence and wisdom to fulfill these guard duties, to be the protectors of the other farmer mice and merchant mice and trader mice. This special cocktail creates heroism, which all the protagonists of the series display to some extent or the other. Since 2006, there have been a number of Mouse Guard stories published. There's Fall 1152 and Winter 1152, each a collection of six issues. The single issues were also in this unique square format. So there's a six-issue miniseries that results in Volume 1. Another six-issue miniseries comprises Winter 1152, following immediately upon the occurrences of Volume 1, as well as the characters introduced in Volume 1. The Black Axe is another six-issue series collected in a volume, and and this is labeled as volume 3 and serves as a prequel to the previous two stories. There's also numerous short stories and vignettes that were published as part of, of the free comic book day series from Arkea. And these stories flit backwards and forwards in time, sometimes referring to the characters that we've already encountered. And the other stories are about mice of legend. And speaking of legends, there's also three volumes of Legends of the Mouse Guard, an anthology series that features not only David Peterson, but a bevy of writers and artists creating stories in the Mouse Guard world that are for the most, or I think all of them, are canonical and consistent with the other stories that we've read. Even more than the free comic book day stories, the Legends anthology series really goes across the centuries and across the geographies, giving us glimpses of the world outside of the heroes or who we thought were the heroes of the first couple of volumes. I'll make a follow-up video on these various editions of Mouse Guard, but first let's talk about what makes this comic so special. The most immediately alluring things about Mouse Guard are the unique setting and the world, as well as the gorgeous art. And to say that these go hand in hand is a ridiculous understatement and oversimplification. What sets Mouse Guard apart from so many other comics to me is the way that it is able to marry both its art as well as what it wants its stories to be about, how it's able to marry them into this perfect blend of comic storytelling. First of all, there's the amplification through reduction. Because we have small heroes, because we have tiny protagonists, everything is huge and therefore everything is dangerous. Any creature you encounter has mythic proportions and abilities. There is never any doubt uh, in our minds of how dangerous the world is for these mice. Every blade of grass, every tree, every root is huge. What we do realize as we read these stories also is that all creatures do have language and intelligence, but their intelligence varies. Mice just happen to be extraordinarily intelligent. By having the setting be pre-industrial or medieval, you really get a sense of the ingenuity of these mice, how they build simple or even complex machines 
is how they use the environment as well as tools to compensate for the weaknesses they otherwise face in the natural world. Every piece of architecture, every artifact of their culture now speaks for this intelligence, for this resourcefulness, and for the presence of beauty and art. Mousegaard's world feels truly immersive. It gets through its central themes of bravery and heroism and struggle and the greater good, selflessness. All of these themes are perfectly conveyed when we get these stories of bravery and sacrifice, of complex and nuanced arguments where heroism is not necessarily put up against villainy, but put up against unsurmountable odds. But there is another aspect of Mouse Guard, perhaps different from its art style and its lore, but definitely connected to them through the idea of storytelling. There is a storytelling reason why I find Mouse Guard to be a true epic and a true classic. Most of these stories, I would say, feel like vignettes, feel like small little miniature portraits of a world. And I'll be honest, the first volume, Fall 1152, it's great, but it isn't as good as what comes after that. So I think that although it sets the stage by giving us the world and by giving us the dynamics and gives us a pretty propulsive, lean story, it merely hints at the larger picture that is clarified in the other works. Even Volume 3, which is the most epic of a quest, even Volume 3 feels like a collection of vignettes in a traditional quest format. I need to get a boat. I need to find out where the relic is. I need to see what this person wants in exchange for that. Those vignettes also serve more like short stories and brief glimpses into character than one epic arc. But even if we leave aside the three main volumes, the Legends collection and the free comic book day stories, I think is where the series really shines and blossoms, or at least where it gets to this new extra level beyond just the first three books. I found the Mouse Guard short stories, the vignettes, the little bits of fables and the legends and the lore given to us in small, seemingly simple pieces coming together to form a really rich, layered and textured narrative. And this is why I really think about Mouse Guard as a comic as being opulent minimalism, its luxurious art and its attention to detail is still being given to us in small bite-sized pieces. The tiniest of things coming together to make something much bigger than any one individual piece seems to be a perfect fit for the story of this mouse guard where these tiny powerless creatures in coming together under this organization with this sort of mission are able to accomplish such incredible feats. It seems to me perfectly fitting that the stories themselves work the same way. Each one a small perfect jewel making up this larger mosaic. No matter where you start reading Mouse Guard from, I think it's easy to be captivated by this world, to find within its stories and within its fables and within its anecdotes a sort of echo and mirror of our ideals, of what we want to accomplish, of what we want true values to be, but at the same time measured against real danger, real effort and real doubts to say that these things don't come easily, even in this iconic fable or fairy tale type of storytelling, even over there, the struggle is so hard and so real and undertaking that struggle is what makes you a hero. These are fantastic themes that the comic never hits you on the head over because it gives you a little piece at a time asking you instead to wallow in the art, to wallow in the environments, to wallow in what one single panel conjures up in your mind that exists all around that panel. You are drawing the rest of the world because of the perfectly given glimpse and the way that it allows you to weave all of these stories together into this perfect tapestry is really what makes this comic an absolute masterpiece. As I said, I'll soon be following this up with a much more direct look at the volumes and books. I'll link that up here when that's ready. I love getting your questions and comments, so please leave them below. This has been For the Love of Comics. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you at the next video.